Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Minchef here with an update on the snow that we have seen. It's not all that much just yet. The snow that we will see and then also the rain uh, in the valley because we've got a flood watch out. So we're going to get to all of those details. Let's start with the radar though. Two things to point out. The first thing is you see the center of the storm riding up the state line there with Oregon. That's bringing moisture into Northern California, but there's kind of a second plume here bringing moisture down into Southern California. It's splitting the flow and splitting the moisture. And so that means we've got a warmer storm with less moisture to work with. So we're not seeing a lot of upslope flow, a lot of forcing uh, of the moisture up the Sierra, which one helps to create snow and two usually helps to lower those snow levels. It's just not happening with this first storm. Doesn't mean we're not going to see any snow. It just means that the onset of snow is happening a lot slower than what we typically see. We've had some de decent rain showers uh, in the valley so far overnight Friday into Saturday brought us a decent amount of rain about a quarter of an inch to a third of an inch across most of the metro area. But this is just the beginning, not as much right now, and it'll be that way through the early afternoon in Northern California, where it's just very, very spotty showers before more widespread showers arrive Saturday night and then even heavier sh uh, uh, rain showers move in Sunday into Monday. So uh, let's jump into it and we'll start with the snow again. Not all that much. It's been pretty high snow levels uh, this morning. We're looking at snow levels about 7000 feet or so, and there's not uh, a lot of moisture to work with just yet. So Bear Valley three inches in the last 24 hours. Sugar Bowl about two inches. North Star two inches. Snow Lab, the, the, the Central Sierra Snow Lab near Donner 1.8 inches uh, in Kirkwood just an inch. That's all we have so far in terms of new snowfall. These numbers aren't going to move the needle uh, when it comes to the California snowpack water equivalent. So the average to date though is now fifth plus 50% uh, in the average uh, to date for Central Sierra and Northern Sierra. So about 55% for both of those. But the all important percent of that April 1st average is still just 28% right now. Uh, April 1st is an important number because that's when our snowpack is typically the greatest. And that means that's when we typically have the most amount of water stored in the Sierra for us to use during the drier months. The Southern Sierra is still lagging behind. I said this in the last storm that we had where it's kind of the opposite of last year where the Southern Sierra uh, was getting hammered and had all the snow down there in the Northern Sierra didn't have much. It was lagging behind this year. Flip flop Northern Sierra is outperforming the rest of the mountain range. Uh, let's keep going now because we've got more snow on the way. Those one to three inches that we've had so far is not all that we've got. Winter storm warning uh, is in effect and continues uh, until Monday at 10 p.m. for the western slope of the Sierra. The eastern slope of the Sierra, uh, there's a lot of shadowing. We're not going to see the moisture come over the crest as much. So it's just a winter weather advisory for this first storm winter storm war or winter storm watch for the second storm that arrives on Sunday. So we might see some more snow on the east side with the storm that pushes in Sunday into Monday. Uh, but generally, because again, there's not as much kind of oomph behind the storm, really just pushing uh, the moisture up the Sierra. It's going to be the western slopes uh, to the crest that has the greater snowfall totals. Stuff on the eastern side is really going to miss out uh, more than they're going to get additional snowfall. Uh, Avalanche watch also in effect for the Sierra because it's also very windy up there. So in addition uh, to the snow that we're seeing, we're also seeing wind gusts at the crest of about 70 miles per hour right now. Here's Futurecast, and you're going to see that it's going to take a little bit of time for that snow to get going in the Sierra. We stay mostly dry in the valley, just some scattered showers through the early afternoon before showers start to redevelop later on in the afternoon into the evening. At this point, this is about 4 o'clock now uh, on Saturday. At this point, you see the snow starting to get going uh, in the Sierra, and then by the time we get into those late evening overnight hours, then that snow gets established. Uh, still expecting uh, snow levels to fall from the roughly 7,000 feet they're at now Saturday morning down towards about 6,000 feet by Saturday night, maybe even a little bit lower, maybe 5,800 feet or so. Uh, so it is going to take a while, but we are going to get that snow. I do expect chain controls to go in effect. In fact, they're already screening for trucks to be carrying chains uh, along I-80 and US-50. I do expect chain controls to go in effect, and we may see other methods of winter winter weather travel impacts going on up there as well and traffic management. Uh, in the valley, though, widespread showers Saturday night continues through Sunday morning where it may be, get even a little bit heavier. Maybe we hear a few rumbles of thunder in the valley as well. You see the yellows and the orange shades there. It does taper off as we go through midday Sunday, kind of similar to what we're going to see on Saturday. 
But the big difference is the second storm arrives late in the day on Sunday. This will be the heaviest rain that we've seen uh, in a while. I expect it to dump about an inch of rain from Sunday into Monday. So we're really going to get a good amount of rain from this. Uh, and then that snow will pick up and be heavier as well. But the thing is, the snow, it's a warmer storm. So the snow levels are going to work their way up the mountain again going from about 6,000 feet up to 7,000 feet on Monday. So there's going to be a period where areas about 6,000 feet are going to get rain, then they're going to get snow, and then whatever snows there may melt off because of the rain that they're going to get at the end of the storm. So it, it's going to be hard to stick a ruler in the ground in some areas and say this is how much snow we got just because uh, of the fact that we're going to get some rain at the tail end of this and it's going to melt off some of the snow at the lower elevation. So again, snow levels uh, are not all that impressive. They're going to stay pretty high the duration of the storm just about past level again coldest really saturday evening into sunday so you see friday there at seven thousand feet dropping seven to six thousand for saturday and then sunday as well and then they rise again on monday towards about seven thousand feet I'm talking about rain now flood watch in the valley goes into effect sunday afternoon continues all day monday and that's because like i said we're going to get a decent amount of rain out of this system so the excessive rainfall outlook from the weather prediction center uh, it tells us the potential for flash flooding, right? So it's 5 to 15% for a level 1, and then it's uh, greater than 15% for a level 2. And then it goes up to moderate and high, but we're not dealing with that kind of uh, of, of, of rain that we're going to see here. It's going to be a level 1 to level 2 uh, marginal to slight for us on the excessive rain. And for the most part, the heaviest rain is going to stay on the west side of the coastal ranges right along the coast uh, right along the north coast there. There's a chance on Sunday that we see some pretty heavy rain in the foothills, uh, but generally the heaviest rain is going to be out on the coastal area, uh, coastal range right along coastal areas. Once we get to Monday, then we've got all across the valley that level one marginal risk for excessive rainfall. Again, that's a 5 to 15 percent chance of flash flooding to occur somewhere in here. Uh, but it's not going to be likely on the the rivers like the major rivers i'm not expecting to see a lot of flooding there what it's going to be is it's going to be smaller creeks smaller streams local impacts right when it comes to flooding not the major river so that's a big uh big point that i want to get across we're not expecting the kasumnas and the sacramento and the american and the san joaquin rivers uh to overspill their banks it's just uh not in the forecast with the storm 24-hour rainfall totals, like I said, we got a decent amount so far. Blue Canyon, about a half an inch. Downtown Sacramento, almost four-tenths of an inch. Lincoln, Roseville, and Elk Grove, all over three-tenths of an inch. Davis and Modesto, about a quarter of an inch. And that's just so far. Plenty of more to come. Jackson and Vacaville, a tenth of an inch. Stockton, though, missing out on a lot of the rain so far. Not even picking up a tenth of an inch just yet. So model rainfall totals, though, through the first storm. So this is about, we'll say, noon on Sunday. And you see just about half an inch, maybe a little more, across most of the valley. Some of the foothills, though, picking up one to two inches uh, of rain through the first storm. Second storm comes in. In the valley, we're going to tack on about another inch of rain, bringing the final, like, storm total rainfall between about a one and a half inches to two inches of rain in the valley. So pretty good storm out of here. And again, the heaviest rain is going to be Sunday, Monday. So we're not even going to see that uh, until we get towards the end of the weekend. Look at some of these totals up in the foothills, though. Uh, over two inches, over three inches up in Nevada City. That's why we have that level two uh, slight risk for excessive rainfall in parts of the foothills, uh, certainly uh, on Sunday. I would do want to point out, though, like I said, not expecting to see major rivers over spilling banks. Uh, it's not that much rain that we're going to see that is going to cause that many problems. But rivers will be running higher, and you're going to notice it. Uh, the Sacramento River at the Calusa Weir, right now it's at about 52 feet high. It is going to rise. In fact, it'll get above the monitor stage, and it'll crest at about 65 and a half feet. That is the current forecast. And when it gets above 61 feet, that's when the Calusa weir starts to flow. And this is a passive weir, so the water just reaches a certain height and then it starts to flow out uh, of the weir. It's not a manual one that you have to open like the Sacramento weir is. So the Calusa weir begins to flow into the Sutter Bypass at 60.9 feet. And we are going to get there. We are going to be spilling water uh, out uh, into the Sutter Bypass with this storm. And the expected weir flow is going to be a little over 15,000 cubic feet per second. Uh, and that is according to the California Nevada River Forecast Center. Uh, in addition to the Calusa weir, the Tisdale weir on the Sacramento River is also expected to flow. Those right now are the only two weirs, uh, again, as of this recording, that are expected to flow. This is the Sacramento River at I Street, so downtown. 
We're not going to get to the monitor stage. We're going to be about 10 feet below it. Uh, but notice it is going to come up. Right now it's about 10 and a half feet, but it is going to rise. And we're going to get to about 15 feet, maybe a little more uh, by the time the river crests. So it's not in danger of flooding. We're not in danger of opening the Sacramento Weir, but uh, it, the river's going to come up. So just be careful around the water for the next several days. Uh, they're going to be running high. They're going to be running fast. And this is going to be especially true for, again, the smaller creeks, the smaller streams, the local ones. Uh, the one that comes to the top of mind, Arcade Creek in Sacramento, is going to be one that we're watching, of course, right? A little more shallow, runs through uh, a lot of uh, houses, a lot of people live around it. Uh, so if you live in an area that's prone to flooding, just kind of get those sandbags, take some precautions. Uh, but again, we're not expecting widespread uh, flooding all across the valley. Statewide precip through the water year, October 1st, started October 1st, 2023. Uh, these are the totals we've got so far, and now this is the departure from normal. Most of us are below average to this point in the water year, except for Eureka and Modesto, which are just a tenth or two above where they normally are, which is good news. But with the storm that we're going to get and we're tacking on an inch and a half to two inches, we could actually get back towards average uh, for the water year so far. Average monthly rainfall January is our rainiest month on average in Northern California. So it is really not a surprise that we've kind of had uh, lots of storms this month. Uh, we might get a little bit of a break coming up, but then we're going to go back to what looks like a rainy and potentially snowy pattern as well at the start of February. Not over the next 10 days, you won't notice it, but uh, certainly over the next three days, we've got that rainy pattern going to be a soggy next several days. We're just going to have to ride through it. But look at the temperatures we're going to get on the back side of it. We're going to be climbing into those low to middle 60s for next weekend. The drier stretch arrives as well. You notice partly cloudy skies, maybe even mostly sunny skies for next weekend. It's been a while since we've had some sunshine. Still a ways away, but generally not looking at rain as we approach next weekend. And again, temperatures in the middle 60s, that is several degrees above average for the time of year. As we work more towards February, though, start of February, literally about February 1, 2, we're looking at that pattern flipping again, going from the warmer, drier, back to cooler and potentially wetter. So even though we're going to take a little bit of a pause, it's not the end, well, it looks like to be not the end uh, of the rainy pattern as a whole. And typically, February, also a very rainy month, as we saw on that chart. So you would hope that that's uh, not the end of the rain for us. It's not, don't worry. Weather playlist though on ABC 10 Plus, in-depth forecasts like this one, weather specials. You can watch Mega Flood, the Water Wasted series. We've got some California drought playlists as well, talking about not just drought, as a lot of comments say. We do talk a lot about it, it is important, but also water in general in California. Uh, you can stream all those on the ABC 10 Plus app. It is free on the Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV. Thanks for watching.